the much anticipated long awaited griddle accessory video. You guys walk down the aisles, you see all the accessories. What do you actually have to have? We come up with five, only five. We revamped the video, we've made it better with our experiences. Hope you guys like it. Here we go. All right, guys, it's time to revisit an old classic. Many years ago, we debuted our, was it seven? Flat top grill must have accessories. At that time, I thought I was experienced enough to give you some what I thought were the must haves. I can look back and I just revisit that video before we started this video. Can we change the video to make it more interactive with you guys? Can we change the video in a way that would be a better video overall with all the knowledge that we have? Because I think it's almost overwhelming to see the type of griddles, the type of accessories, and the things that are popping up all over the internet with the griddle craze, right? Everything from pancake dispensers to taco holders to um, crazy style spatulas that have a knife on one side and a flat side on the other, it's, it's nuts. With that being said, let's start the video. Number one, the griddle spatula. I'm gonna list it very first. You're gonna end up using your spatula for about, I don't know, maybe 95% of your cooks. So it's literally the most dominant tool that you're gonna use with griddle cooking. With that being said, I've got a list and a showcase of spatulas that we've gathered through all the years. This isn't um, even all of them. <laughs> no, this is just shows you different types and variations. We actually have a dedicated video of why I still like my spatulas. The same two spatulas I bought with my very first Camp Chef griddle are the same two spatulas that I use. So with that being said, if you notice there's no brand on there, right? I try to do this based on what I actually love without brand loyalty. I and not a brand enthusiast. Some people will buy every single item that a brand offers. I'm more of a person that would rather have a little bit of here, a little bit of there, a little bit of there, knowing that I'm getting what I would consider the best of the best, regardless of the brands. Number two is the bench scraper. I highly regard it right up there with a spatula because I seem like I use it just as often as a spatula. There's not many times that I actually use a spatula with not even using a bench scraper. Why do you say that? Um, it's really broken down into three categories. First of all, I preach clean as you go. If you notice that through my cooks, I'll move food over, and then I'll start scraping the griddle clean because that allows you to be able to clean your griddle while you go inside and enjoy your hot food. That's important. Second of all, when you're doing sticky foods, uh, your sugars will start hardening on your griddle if you don't scrape them as you go. You notice like a lot of times in my videos, I'll take the scraper or my spatula and I'll clean them right there. And that's because the food junk is building up on the edges. You get that cleaned off and now you've got a clean surface. Third and foremost is the chopping experience. We mentioned that with the spatulas, how some of them have like the sharpening edge. This has a small beveled edge, but it's not near as sharp. And when you're doing cheesesteaks or something like that, you put pressure down the meat and you're able to chop like this. And this is able to get that fine texture that you know as those Philly cheesesteaks. I'm not gonna rank these. But if you're looking at griddle accessories, these have to be their two dominant ones. These are other alternatives. This is probably hands down my favorite tool that I've ever used. The unfortunate thing is it comes in a kit that other things come in there and people don't seem to like what's in the kit. They just want the scraper. I can't help that. It's just in the kit. The reason is, is I'm able to kind of like be lazy. If you notice that it's got the corners, I like the fact that your griddles are, you know, like, they look like that so you can just get the stuff out of the corners, right? You see the corner go in the corner. This is just, just the way the tang runs down, the way it's bent, it just scrapes it a little bit more effortlessly. Able to get your hand off the griddle just a hair more, not much more, but just a hair more. One thing I just wanna shout out to is from the recommendations from you guys. There's one thing that I do not cook with, but I do understand the concept. It's a bent, is a, um, a putty knife. They come in different sizes. You can find them, find them at your like department stores for lumber and all that stuff. Um, I understand the concept, I really do, but I just got in the habit of using these two right here. Uh, way before griddle cooking became popular, like in the Navy, we were using these two tools. And when you have that other scraper, the, um, the tool, then it's just something else that I have to have. And we're talking about must-haves. Number three on the list is the squirt bottle. Probably the most two popular ingredients that go in there is a oil and some water. Now, if you look here, we've got different sizes, shapes, configurations, everything from thick to skinny to um, long to short. So this has been uh, dominate the internet lately. I've actually been trying it out. I do understand the concept. Matter of fact, I'm on board with it. I have found some faults with it. 
it's not as perfect as what people say it is. It's the pressure. This is what I found that's most important. I'll, I'll, I'll mimic one of these, okay? It takes a little bit of pressure to get it out, like a little bit more pressure than what you would think. And when you do, it seems like it's a, it's, it's kind of hard just to just get a couple drips out. Like, I mean, you really gotta, anyways. I know it seems minute, but I'm serious when I say it. That's why I don't use it on camera. The other option is just a standard squirt bottle. Granted, they're not the most, you know, whatever. They are going to leak eventually, but most of these are pretty cheap, okay? I know this one's free. You've already paid for it once. You might as well reuse it. I completely understand. But this is the difference. When you're trying to do eggs or you're trying to fine tune a little oil in the griddle, sometimes you just want like a little drop. You understand the difference? Like sometimes you just don't need a lot to come out. You don't have to put a lot of pressure behind it. And for me, that's why something like this gets the nod over something like this. Number four on the list, a doming system. However you want to word it, however you want to use it, we got some out for you. This is from Weber, it's rectangle, just about as basic as it looks. The Traeger, a little bit thicker. See a little escape porthole right there. You, without taking the dome off, you can actually take some water, some oil, put it in there, squeeze it. You never take the dome off. I actually end up using this quite a bit for the size and the shape. Um, over here, we have the one that I recommended in the original video because I like the cooling rack with it. I think this was a good surface area size-wise. I like the handle. I like the fact that it can vent a little bit. Um, you can put your food on there like we've done country fried steak and raise it off the griddle. When you're cooking bacon, hash browns, or pancakes, you can get those off the griddle. Uh, so this is kind of like a combo pack. But no matter how you do it, a doming system. Somebody said one time it's ridiculous to have a round dome on a square griddle because you lose that cooking space. Whatever floats your boat. Here we go. Last, talking about recycling. Uh, you can take a bowl like this at any size. You can buy a handle from a hardware store. Screw it in yourself. Um, like your uh, places like... Um, Goodwill and stuff like that always have cheap bowls. So that's another option. Instead of spending the X amount of dollars on a dome, uh, you know, you can always recycle one. What do you use them for? A lot. We actually use them quite a bit, um, especially to build up that heat on the inside. I don't necessarily melt cheese as much as you would think. So I actually use it for other things like uh, vegetables, broccoli, stir fries. Um, we've done, like I said, country fried steak where we set the country fried steak off here. We've domed it and then allowed that heat to escape through the holes while we're finishing like, you know, maybe a cream gravy or some potatoes on the griddle or something like that. So I think domes are extremely popular when it comes to griddle cooking. That just gives you like four basic varieties of what you guys want to use. I personally believe this should be the number one because technically you don't have to have a spatula. Technically you don't have to have a bench scraper. Technically you don't have to have a water bottle. If you want to bring a bowl of water out and sprinkle it with your hand, you can, right? I think a thermometer in any cooking situation is the number one most important thing that you can ever have. Instead of doing two different ones, we kind of grouped them in together. I did not use an infrared thermometer on my very first video as a must have. The more we get into it, the more I understand where you guys are coming from. I can understand why it would be a must have, okay? I truly believe a Instarate thermometer is a must have. I've got different brands here. I just know for a fact that these are without a doubt, the most important things that you could possibly use. Uh, whether you're doing chicken breasts, uh, fish, you know, you name it. You always need the inter burgers, right? They all are somewhat close to temp. It's amazing how the different temperatures read, but that's just the life of it. They're all calibrated recently and still out here today, you can see the difference in the variances. Right here, an infrared gun. So not too long ago, we developed a griddle temperature chart. And this is basically what we believe in when it comes to griddle cooking for the ideal temperatures. There's a lot of variations to go into it. But to get there, you got to know what your griddle is reading. I preached for four years that I didn't think it was necessarily to have this because I cook with butter. I cook with oils. I understand the temperatures. And I truly believe that temperatures don't matter as much as what people give it credit for, except for certain situations. Eggs are delicate. We think a certain temperature for pancakes. When it comes to smash burgers or meat, you can get away with a lot of temperature variations. But for a infrared thermometer, like I said, I've used both of them. This is the one I started off with. And we just got this one recently because it's easier to read on camera for you guys. So when I'm telling you the temps, then you guys can see it easier. So for me, I don't care which one. It doesn't bother me at all. I think it's a necessity. I think even if you didn't have a griddle, whether you're barbecuing, you, talk, you hear people talk about probe tender, but probing your meat 
and getting it to feel like butter, you're gonna to have to have a probe thermometer. So the thermometers to me at number five, honestly, in my opinion, if I had to rank them would be number one. That's my personal opinion. There's plenty of options out there for you guys to choose from. Alrighty, to me, those top five girdle accessories and must-haves are the most important. The point is, is I'm gonna give you a list of kind of like stuff that I think is really good on the market that I feel like would enhance your girdle experience, starting off with number one, a girdle caddy. Many brands have them out there. This came from Weber. I think they knocked it out of the park with their accessory bundle kit on their new Weber Slate. I absolutely love this about the feature. But it just goes to show you uh, really quickly, this is a apple cider vinegar I've always got, a little hack. I just put the squirt bottle nozzle right on top and then I have a big jug. I'll fill this one up and this is what I squirt my stuff with. Um, if you guys are interested, we have another YouTube channel called Pellets and Pits and we do that quite often over there. So I even use this same caddy for that channel. Uh, we talked about our thermometers. You see my thermometers in there. I've always got those in there. The oils that I use, water, fit in there. And then most importantly, to really up your griddle game, it's probably the best seasonings on the market. Some guy sent them to me. He said they're really good. I tried them out and they are really, really, really good. You guys can check that out at theflattopking.com. But no, really, uh, what I wanted to show you was the size, <laughs> to be honest with you. Just to, to and those are big bottles. Yeah, those are big bottles. So it just gives you the size of what you're working with. Everybody knows that size matters. This fits on top just like that. So it depends on what you put inside. You know, you can cover it up. And then there's that. Another honorable mention, Burger Press. I went for years without having one because I didn't feel like it was a absolute must have. You can actually take a burger ball, put it on the griddle, 10, 15 seconds, flip it over, take your spatula, take this, not this, because this is what bends, and then press it down like this. I just felt like if you're getting a six to seven inches of surface area, I found like that my spatula, since I decided to go with the narrow ones, don't necessarily do the job that I would like it to do. Over the years, we start off with this burger press. I will say this before I get here, before I get sidetracked. I do not recommend the burger press that has the lines in it, okay? I think you're better off to going with a flat surface. My personal opinion, it is what it is. These are stainless. This is cast iron. And then there's this one. This is 100% made in America. It's made right up the road from us by a fantastic smoking uh, manufacturer company. They build incredible pits called TMG Pits. So they actually manufacture my burger press for me. The circumference is about six inches. And if you notice, when we do a lot of burgers, this is six inch parchment paper. And it's just kind of like a guide. So if you can imagine, right while well, like this one then if you look at this it's a little bit too large right so you can't really see how thin you're squ squishing it and if you take your burger ball and you squish like this then you're rocking back and forth trying to get even burger and it just doesn't work as well i'm not saying mine's the greatest out there i'm just saying there's a reason why we built it like that and there's a reason why i recommend it burger press if you're going to get one i would not recommend the stuff on the bottom that looks like lines i like a flat burger Griddle covers. I think the more that griddles are manufactured, the more that they are coming with covers. When we originally did our first flat top grill accessory, a griddle cover was a must have because my original camp chef did not have one, okay? Fast forward. I think most of Blackstones now, the Webers, the Traegers, the camp chefs, heck, even like the, um, the Sam's, if you have one that doesn't have a cover, it's highly encouraged to get a cover. Now. Whether you do a hard cover, a custom cover, or a silicone cover, that's up to you. I've got a silicone mat here today on my Weber. This is from Camp Chef. It fits your Camp Chef perfectly. I'm not 100% sold on silicone mats. I think they don't necessarily do the job that they preach, but I do like in the fact that since I'm out here so often, you can see right here, I've got debris. I don't know even where it came from, but it does keep your griddle clean like that. I wouldn't recommend storing it for a long time. Um, if you want it down to nuts and bolts, I feel like if this fit this perfectly, like I know there's a lot of orange ones out there for your Blackstone. When I had my Blackstone, we had a silicone mat. What I found was it gave me a false sense of security because dirt, debris, and water would still eat up in these edges. And then when you open it like this, you would still see like how the water and dirt would uh, come down. So I use it just because we come out here just about every single day. Don't let the false sensitivity of this get in the way of like a hard cover or a soft cover or something like that. So. However you want to do a cover, that's up to you. One thing we get asked all the time about the Traeger is how do we stop food coming through these little holes? These little Dollar Tree bench scrapers, we set them down just like that, stops the food from going out, okay? 
also why these are important because in our original video, one thing that we did not have on there or didn't even mention was the fact of wind guards. It goes back to what I preached the whole time. My experience might be different than yours. We're protected the way the wind blows, so we don't have a lot of wind. I never needed wind guards. Not until we got the 22 inch Blackstone did I realize how important some wind guards are to some griddles. Some griddles today, like for example, the Halo, the Traeger, the Weber, I'm sure some of the new Blackstones, I know for a fact, um, anyways, you name it, have built in wind guards, which means that on your griddle, you'll notice that it's recessed a little bit lower and not sticking up as high, okay? What that does is protect the wind from coming in. Not everything's perfect, but some people might need a wind guard. I've actually used these on the 22 inch Blackstone. Sometimes I have to put two on one side. Sometimes I put one on each side and sometimes I only use one. It really depends on what the wind's doing and the heat that I'm trying to get and all that stuff. So a uh, wind guard for some could be a must have. So there it is in a nutshell. Like I said, we try to go from the very basic from the beginning. We try to do my approach, which basically just get the best possible regardless of price because it's not my determination of how much you can afford or cannot afford. That, that's not me. I just look at it like what is the best bang for the buck? And then ultimately, you know, if you want to be the, the person that supports the brand, then you can go the brand the whole way. Whatever brand it is, you insert that brand name and you can get all their accessories. I just want the best to make my cooking experience the best possible. So um, with that being said, that's it in a nutshell. I hope this um, sheds some light on some of the information that we do behind the scenes, why I swear by the stuff, and hopefully it creates a easier transition to the griddle community for your cooking and all that being said. If you guys are interested, don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace. And go check out Pelton Pits. <laughs> the TV just changed on oh, us. Oh, jeez. <laughs>